Hello, 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 and welcome. This is the Texas Live. I'm Shane Moore. And I'm Sue Ellen. And we welcome you. Um, tonight, we we have a very, very interesting um, episode. Um, unsettling, to say the least. But nevertheless, it's also fascinating. <laughs> um this is this is um a recent discovery in uh quantum mechanics that um is just it is well it's mind boggling um a recent discovery in quantum mechanics seems to confirm a very unsettling fact about quantum entanglement that will affect everything we have ever known. This is what Einstein called spooky action at a distance, and it disturbed him. Um, in 1964, Irish physicist John Bell developed Bell's theorem, also known as determinism. Hey, Mona, also known as determinism, which, which proposes that... Um, that Everything, everything is predetermined, has been predetermined, and um, that it is, it is set in stone. Uh, there's, there's no changing it, and that, that free will, choice, etc., whatever you want to put in there, karma, is all nothing more than an illusion that is also part of the predetermined program, if you want to call it that, and um, that humans are programmed or led to believe that they have free will when in fact everything that you think that you're doing yourself that the choices that you're making are in fact they've already been made and we will talk about how that has been proven scientifically um and what this means if if this is if this is true which which it it is pretty much confirmed to be true and this is revolutionary this is well, there's still theories out there. They have them. They have some theories, right? That are out there that we were talking about. So, right. Um, and and then we have to look at, you know, the reasons why. Well, you know, what is this? What is it for? Then you know we have to get into. It. There's a lot of questions. <laughs> but you said is, that's what you always say that that's where you learn is from the questions you ask. That's it. absolutely. And um, this is. This is one that that um, you you can see all over the world. I mean, you can see it in quotes. You can see it in movies. The Matrix is a huge one, um, but there's other movies mm -hmm. that it's in, um, such as um, I guess. Um, like the Truman Show and everything. Yeah. This 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 is a, a yeah. Type. In the movie with Nicole Kidman. Remember when everybody was fake? The others. They were all just the, the others. others. And the, yeah, that's where they were all going to Walmart with. And they all looked the same. They all dressed yes, the same. Yes, the yes, yes, yes. It was very creepy. Very creepy movie. But um, that's um, that is just it's it is not just another simulation theory this is this is the closest that this is the closest that comes to my own theory which which I um, somehow picked up on or tuned into whatever you want to call it um, back in 97 98 before the matrix ever came out and that's why that when when i um when i and my wife at the time 
went to see the Matrix that I told her, I said, go buy two more tickets because my mouth was just open. I could not believe. She said, this is everything that you have talked about. She said, it's like you wrote this. And I said, I I can't believe it, you know. I said, I cannot believe. And I, it was just amazing. I mean, I'm, 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 you know, watching this, and it's like, whoa. You talk about feeling like someone has literally been inside your mind. Because I didn't make this known. I mean, it's, you know, it sounds crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, especially then, you know, 97. I mean, you just didn't talk about, you know, no one talked about you know sim simulation theory, and um, there's there's a, you know one thing too that that has been documented as a as a mental disorder, and it is my my own mom said that when she was a child that she at one time was convinced that her parents had been replaced by clones or whatever and i forget what that's yeah. called but it is it is a um it is a documented yeah. mental disorder uh -huh. where that's where a child what now yeah yeah i remember um i remember <laughs> the, that disorder yes uh, and uh, actually uh, so <laughs> yeah well um well, there's there this what we are going to talk about tonight may <laughs> this is this is what I'm going to say, and I'm just going to use that as one one example. That child that that doesn't believe that those are his or her parents may be right on some level. I mean, there may be some truth to that, as crazy as it sounds, because um, it's, um, hey, Michelle, no, 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 that's fine, that's fine, um, we were, we were running behind, I'm, I'm so sorry, I apologize for that, um, but, um, we, uh, we, um, yeah, just, uh, setting everything up and stuff and we got started late so sorry about that but we will and thank you for that hey Elaine okay. but um but that child may be right and to to some degree because according to this theory so they talk they talk about walk-ins what now they talk about walk-ins have you ever heard of walk-ins walk Ruth Montgomery that's where people like let's let's say my life is just so miserable. I'm right. just so depressed. I really want to die. I want to give up. So I make an unconscious agreement to allow somebody else to take over right. my life and and make an agreement to finish my my karma or whatever. From the um, from from the books written by Bruce Montgomery, I read those when I was like twelve. Those those are some of the first books mm -hmm. that I read. Um, and very, very interesting. Um, definitely so. Ruth Montgomery. Um, it's um, kind of um, kind of a different, um, you know, kind of a different route. But anyway, it's very, very interesting. So um, you should um, you should check that out. Anyway, this is. Um, this is according to John Bell's theorem, of course, also known as super determinism, which again um, says that everything has been predetermined and it is set and it's it can't can't be changed and that choice, free will, that humans only believe that they have choice that they have free will and that's part of the what has been uh, written and it's um, it is um, 
so um so it is um like um like a screenplay much 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 like a screenplay which is what i have said uh you know like what did shakespeare say all the world is the stage and we are merely players or merely actors yeah so we have our entrances and our exits yes our beginnings and our ends absolutely and um and one thing is is uh too that um it it is um einstein said that um said um god does not play dice with the universe meaning that that uh god or the um, the creator the source the programmer the ultimate programmer that there was there was no way that that he or it or she would allow any room for something to be beyond their control and that that made me think about when the bible says the most high god the all powerful well, there you go. The all powerful. It doesn't say, you know, the most powerful, or um, doesn't say, you know, really, really powerful. It says the almighty God. Um, you know, the all powerful. Well, all means all. And I want to read you a quote from Einstein. And this is this is just amazing. I mean, it is this this is a quote that I never knew that he um, made. But this is like I said, this is re, re, this is revolutionary. Okay, listen to this. Um, Einstein says um, everything is determined, the beginning as well as the end, by forces over which we have no control. It is determined for insects as well as for the stars. Human beings, vegetables, or cosmic dust, we all dance to a mysterious tune intoned in the distance by an invisible piper. End of quote. And there's... Right. April? Any later... Any later. <clears throat> Hi, April. But... There's some you know key words that I want want to point out is he said everything is determined, and then he says the beginning as well as the end. Now in the Bible Jesus says I am the Alpha the Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last. Um, and then Einstein says by forces over which we have no control. He says, um, we all dance to a mysterious tune, which I find very interesting because Tesla said everything is frequency. Everything is vibration. And then, very eerie, but he says, intoned in the distance by an invisible piper. And what what is the quote? Um, we all must pay the piper. Very creepy. Anyway, Einstein also said, quote, you can will what you want, but you can't will what you will. End of quote. Oh, Michelle, you're not whining. You were just telling the truth. We do need to start earlier. Matter of fact, I'm probably talking in my sleep right now. So, um... But, and I'm going to tell on myself, okay, <laughs> about two months ago, actually, I actually dozed off live and woke up sitting up and I was still talking. So my mouth never stops, literally. I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure that when my time comes that they will definitely have to tape my mouth shut. Um and then it probably won't won't even work i mean so anyway um so 
this this is hey Nazreen glad you joined us um, this is on the surface you may say okay this is just another you know simulation theory it's not this this is this is from an article that I read um, yesterday morning and I talked about it last night and I went back to find that article and it's gone but I found a I found a uh, you know, this uh, you know, video that somewhat explains the article that I read and I could swear that I saved that article that I saved it and you ask Mona, I spent like an hour last night trying to find it. And I'm like, it's gone. It's and, and I did searches and it's nowhere to be found. Nowhere. And so I'm thinking, wow, did somebody like, you know, can that? You know, did they just wipe that completely out? Wouldn't surprise me because when you really, really get down into this, it is really, it could, it could be really, really bad, freak a lot of people out. So, you know, this is kind of, this is going to be a freaky, deaky show. So, anyway, your thoughts, Sue Ellen? Sue Ellen? Um, oh, okay. Well, I, yeah, 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 I'm here. Hi, Nazarene. Oh, I was just listening to you. You brought up a lot of interesting things. Um you just recently introduced me to this theory. Um, and, uh, actually there's a lot of things that support what you're saying. Um, there's actually an article in psychology today and it's the name of it is illusion of choice, the myth of free will in this article. I mean, it when goes is on to say when, um, uh, it's August 28, 2016. Okay. Wow. It's called The Illusion illusion of Choice, The Myth of Free Will. So this is about the same time as that when the simulation theory was coming out? Mm-hmm. Well, same time, right? well, well, it was a, was around around the time that, you know, people really started talking about it, uh, you know, giving it, you know, serious thought. Especially when you have someone like Elon Musk that says, you know, yeah, we're basically in it. Um, and that's, that's not, that's not just someone saying that. That's Elon Musk. I mean, he's, you know, he's certainly not, right. he's, you know, certainly qualified to. But my only fear, my only fear is that it, it doesn't become a religion in itself. And that it's not just a bunch of other crap <laughs> that we're being told to program ourselves well so true. we again don't see how powerful we are you know what i mean and that we think that there's just nothing we can do and that's what makes always makes the drama why we watch movies you know <laughs> you know it's the bad guy so i would like to think that we do have ways out good point yeah very good point but um Yes, and and it's just you know like I said last night, this this is not not the conclusion. This is not what I really wanted to come to, but it seems to be that this is what I've come to uh, myself. And um, but just like everything else, I mean, no matter what it is, you know, I'm going to deal with it. I mean, what? What am I supposed to do? Run and hide? Yeah, and that's, that's not going to happen. I mean, what is that going to help? What, 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 yeah. It, you, it, what? There was, there's no hiding, really. So, right. you know what I mean? Right. You actually be tracked, knowing where we're at, our very exact location. But I, I just wanted to say, so this article states that your brain is the one who gives you the thoughts that you had the choice. They show that the, um, what was it? Tapping the, the wrist. Uh, bending the wrist is okay. is is the uh, one one that I read. 
bending okay, the yeah, waist. Okay, yeah, or or which I uh, or which I uh, you know choose uh, to to Wink. which I you choose the right or the left. But you know they're saying it. We think it's our choice, but they've really done brain studies and watched that it's actually the brain that is making the choice and then making us feel the experience that we had choice. Yes, and and this is you know, what they this did. Is insane. This is in psychology today. This isn't in you know some art cell art. You know. Yeah, it's not in the Sylvia Brown archives or anything. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, what they did was um, was they had you know I believe it was high speed cameras like microseconds, and they would tell people bend your wrist. Well, they would bend their wrist in in two hundredths of a micro or two two hundred microseconds. Okay. Well, then they put electrodes on the person's head on their. Uh, the their you know motor cortex of their brain and they found that that the that the wrist believe it or not that the motor cortex lit up 500 milliseconds or microseconds before that so that means before they bent their wrist, which means that three, that three hundred microseconds before the command was given, it was already received. Now I know that is not within our bounds of of but it makes sense logic. If you think that there is no time, if there is no time in reality, right. And this is, you know, some kind of construct. Well, then it makes more sense. Right. So, so at at uh, here, here here it is motor cortex of people moving their wrist, bending their wrist. Two hundred microseconds. The brain began um, at at two hundred microseconds. They bent their wrists. Okay. At five hundred microseconds before. Um, they began the initial movement, which means that 300 seconds before the command was given, it it had already been received, and that's just it. Mm-hmm. Is is mm-hmm. quantum entanglement literally means that it is faster than light, and not not just which. Which it wouldn't matter if it was five miles faster than light, but it's it's something like a hundred thousand times faster than light, which would be damn near instantaneous, right? Okay, but get this. Yeah, that's there, what they're saying in a twinkling of an eye. Right, but there have been experiments, and this is this is so hard to even contemplate, but it's fun to comp- to contemplate because it would explain a lot of as Einstein said spooky action at a distance or or coincidence or which I don't believe in coincidence I believe in providence um, but there have been experiments where the result was received before the experiment started and that makes no sense in our time frame. There was also, but yeah, there was an article. Go ahead. But our time frame is actually no frame at all because time doesn't exist, space doesn't exist. So that makes much more sense about faster than light, which would be you would actually be transcending time moving faster than light um, and there was a there was a because uh, it, there is no spoon it can right it can there is the no trick. spoon absolutely and um, <laughs> yes little spoon boy I love him um, there's a there was a physicist in 1994 uh, last name Strawson who said if 
if one tries to change oneself, those goals and methods are determined by genes, by genetic makeup, DNA, etc. What one can become is determined by what one already is. And that's what I, that's why I believe that your DNA is your book of life. When you were born, I believe everything, every experience, everything that you were going to do, and this, this actually is the premise of super determinism or Bell's theorem, is that it, it was encoded, it, it was literally put like a computer program, everything that you would do, like listening to this podcast tonight, was written in your DNA, the book of life. And I believe that that's exactly what the Bible talks about when it talks about the book of life. I believe it's talking about your DNA. Um, And I'll read that again. He says, quote, If one tries to change oneself, those goals and methods are determined by genes, DNA, genetic makeup, etc. What one can become is determined by what one already is. End of quote. And um, so that is, that's really, that really gets into a lot. I mean, it is, it's so deep. And, uh, but it's pretty simple. It's, it's just, it, it's indescribable um, what, what it would mean. Um, it's, it's like, a, like, like you take, you know, uh, the word quantum, which comes from quanta. Quanta are light pockets or pockets of energy, correct? Okay. Um, you take that, that, um, that quanta and, um, and, it's it goes on it it goes on forever i mean it it may change but it remains it never dies that it's it's always going to be energy it says, it says, we want to quanta it's saying quanta do what now what is the best i was looking at what what is the best definition well, well, it's, it's from the Latin word for the amount. The modern understanding means the smallest possible discrete unit of any physical property, such as energy or matter. Right. He called the unit quanta. Right, which would be uh, <laughs> Max, Max Planck and um, Planck's length or whatever, which is the smallest, um, which was said to be the smallest, but now they're even saying that there's even smaller particles. But... Um, Quanta is... You know, this is discrete. Yeah, they just mean discrete by our means of what we have, what they have. Right. That's the smallest it breaks. So that's what I mean by right. discrete. And, um... Because they're very... But, but <clears throat> it's, um... It's light. It's light, you know... Um... It, it can be light or it could be matter. It could be... It could be either... It could be both. That sounds kind of godlike. <laughs> absolutely. Well, absolutely, because what what does it say in you know Genesis? God said, "Let there be light." Well, that was before the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets were created, correct? Because it says about the fourth or fifth day that those were created. So people they 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 see it in their mind as um, it says it says and and the spirit of God hovered over the waters of the deep or something like that and then God said let there be light and there was light and um, and he saw it was good and and first and he said first was the word so it's all about the word and it's all about the light right so says um, says and he he said and it was, and he said, and it was, and he said, and it was. But many people see in in their mind's eye; they see 
a literal light shining in the darkness, and that's not what that means. The Hebrew word for that, uh, for light, in Genesis chapter 1, can mean light, but it also means data, information, or quanta. Mm -hmm. Quanta. Mm -hmm. And so... Unit, yeah, units of information. So, so you you have uh, there there again. You have metaphorical language, um, darkness. The the dark waters is ignorance or lack of knowledge. The light is knowledge. It's wisdom. It's it's speaking knowledge um, into. The darkness. It's speaking light into the darkness. It's spe- it's bringing knowledge and understanding into ignorance and well, I, no, lack I of think knowledge. The way that it's all, yeah, but but also one definition, the literal definition of it is that they're in the Jewish. Um, I mean, Jewish guys. I don't know if they're in the Kabbalah, you know, but the the real Jews um, that practice. And, and they said that it, it literally says there was a destruction. So it's like from the destruction, uh, they made something new. Well, but but oh, they they were alluding to this wasn't the first time. And and it wasn't. Matter of fact, the and, and they were they were letting you know like the first things you have to do. What is the word? You have to make language, right? All right. To have a people group or whatever. You have to have a language and the word, and that is the word is king, and you and people it becomes that way. Well, um, really, if well, you think about it. well, it says says in the original Hebrew as as you know, far far as I can tell. I mean, who knows? I mean, I wasn't there when it was written, so this is just a theory. But they say. As far as the Jewish rabbis and scribes and everything that that really study this, they say that the original Hebrew says, "In a beginning, the God created the heavens and the earth." And if you read it even now, in like the mm-hmm. King James or the modern versions, God tells Adam and Eve to replenish the earth, not not to fill it. But to replenish it, exactly. which means that, oh, good point. which means that um, they weren't the first. God's telling them, mm-hmm. or the Creator, the Source, the Programmer is telling them, and what you're replenish it. About, and what you're talking about is, they, is that there's supposed to be um, five extinctions before, and they some people say that we're going into six, right? And I, I have said that for. Um, like 22 years or 23 years yes i have i have said that for i don't know i i i have no idea but i just started thinking about the days of of the week and um and the you know seven known planets you know in ancient times and then it came to me okay there's been five and I, planet I, killers yeah, or I civilization killers or whatever and this is the sixth cycle this is the sixth and final the the last cycle will be the sabbath will be the rest and man are we ready for it i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <clears throat> but um it's well, hopefully we're not going. It's not the extinction yet. Well, you think the extinction is a thousand years, or, or you just think the extinction means the end of the program? I think it's the, I think it's the end of of the program. I think it's the end of, of um, many experiments that form the total program, which is. Um, <laughs> Maybe it's like Life 101 or Life 1.0, and then um, it's just different uh, tests or uh, cycles. But 
um, what the what what this you know theory what this you know proposes it makes you read the Bible it makes you read um, the the um, ancient Hindu text and uh, you know, Buddhist text and everything much much yeah, differently all of them. yeah because, because they all share the Vedas right you know they talk about destruction they talk about from um, uh, they, it looked like nuclear war well, well uh, so um, well, you remember when the Rismo, huh well you you have the uh, you know Catholic rosary it has 108 beads you have the Buddhist mala that has 108 mm -hmm. beads and number is just reoccurring through many religions so for you know uh, for you know Catholics or you know Christians say well you know it's it's this and that hold on there because you really need, need your homework on these other religions because when you look at them the only thing that well, not 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 the only thing, but there's a lot of similarities between some of these religions um, and 108. And, and people have been lied to too, like the swastika that was taken over by the Rothschilds and used as that symbol for um, it became used as a symbol for Jewish people. But in ancient times, I mean, it was used in ancient civilizations. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know exa the exact meaning, but I know it meant you know balance and harmony. I know it meant a good thing. What the, know, uh, the Nazis was did was is the what the Nazis did though was they reversed it, I believe, and which you know that sounds pretty satanic, doesn't it? Well, yes. I mean, that's that's basically what they were. I mean, um, mm -hmm. you know, a re a reversal, yeah, yeah, going backwards. Um, but, um, so, but this is, this is the real, um, this is the real shocker and it's, it is very interesting, but it's also very unsettling if you ask me, um, is that, um, Einstein, uh, Oppenheimer, um, Teller, um, and, many many more of these uh, you know physicists that worked on worked on the Manhattan project building the atomic bomb um, they many people think that they were doing all these equations and mathematics and um, advanced mathematics and everything and they were but Einstein's wife um, Teller's mm -hmm. wife they talked about how at night that they they would stay awake reading the Kabbalah and reading the ancient uh, Vedic text, Vedic text, and um, they would. That's where that's where they got got their um, knowledge to build the atomic bomb to to discover nuclear power and this is this is just it is in the Kabbalah there are books there's the book of radiance there's the book of transformation or the book of formation uh, and those the book of formation the uh, Sefer Yetzara Yetzara um so very very dangerous book is what the Jewish people say. Those are those are books in the Kabbalah, or they're separate from the Kabbalah. Well, they they make up the Kabbalah, <laughs> the Zohar. Hey, Patricia, the Zohar, which is called the Book of Splendor, the um, Sefer Yetzira, the Book of Formation, which is literally how. Um, the world was made by the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. But, and there, there is truth to that. Because but they had to be played, but they had to be 
played, there had to be played like their notes. Right, and right. They needed the right frequency to be played on the right instrument. Right, right, because it's frequency. And this has been proven by uh, cymatics, I think it's called, where where you take sand and, yeah. you, and you play the the tone yeah. or, or the exactly. frequency. And it forms... Um, it it forms the Hebrew letters, okay? Now, but even then, those letters are only symbols. And you may ask, symbols of what? Symbols of subatomic particles that make up reality. And that's why that, that the Kabbalist... How many elements are there? How, how, how many elements? I think I think there's. How many elements are there? I think now there's like 118. You might check that. 119. I wonder if it was 108. I wonder if it was 108 at one point. I just thought you know the number. I well, started thinking. About well, science. well, I'm sure. So what about periodical? How I'm sure. Many I'm sure at one point it was 108. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I just wonder what the hundred and eighth element is. I don't know right offhand, but this is just it. This is just that. Is that one hundred and eighteen? You're on it. You are on it. What now? It's one hundred and eighteen. You are on it. Oh, well. In eighteen sixty nine, there were sixteen elements. There, there were what? In 1869, there were 69 known elements which were used to create the first table. Wow. So they started off with six. Well, um, what what is the 108th element? Oh, that's a good one. Because this is, this is no lie, okay? This is a little, this, this. Um, Hassium. What, what now? Potassium is a chemical element, with, and its symbol is HF. Okay. So that would be 819. That would be 819 or in that whatever. And atomic number 108. It is not known to occur in, in, in the nature, and it has only been made in laboratories in minuscule quantities. It is highly radioactive. The most stable known isotope. It has a half-life of approximately 16 seconds. The first attempt to synthesize the element 108 was made at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Duba, something Moscow, uh, Russian, in 1978. Another attempt was made at the venue in 1983, and in 1984, the latter resulted in the claim that the element 108 had been produced. Later in 1984, an attempt was made um, at the Gashen Slot for Schoen, I'm not even going to say it. I know, <laughs> it's in German. But, who also claims synthesis. In 1993, a report by the Joint Working, that was just a bunch of German people. And the 1993 report by the Joint Working Party between the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry and the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics concluded the report from Darm's Darmstadt that more conclusive on its own and thus the major credit was assigned to the German scientists who chose the name Hassium after the German state of Hesse or Hesse oh okay yeah the German state of Hesse in the periodic table of the elements it is a transactinide element whatever that is Cassium is a member of the seventh period and belongs to the group eight elements. Hmm. It is thus the sixth member of the 60 series of transition metals. Chemistry experiments have confirmed that Cassium behaves as a heavier homologue to osmium in group eight. The chemical properties of hassium are characterized only partly, but the, they compare well with the chemistry of the other group, other group eight elements in bulk quant- quantity. Hassium is expected to be a silvery metal that ha- reacts readily 
with oxygen in the air, forming a volatile tetro tetroxide. Thank you, Elaine. Huh. Hassium. Okay. Well, I'm I'm about to blow your mind. Okay, like literally. Okay, the number one hundred eight with the rosary with the Buddhist mala and um, you know they they have one hundred and eight um, and and there's different that number is a very sacred number in many different religions. Okay, now the the number of the es- esoteric number of of the sun our sun believe it or not is 666 okay now you can look this up and but the esoteric number of our sun is 666 that doesn't mean it's evil doesn't mean it's bad or anything that's just the number and you can look it up and read why that you know why why I was given that value. Now the it is in the technology it, it the material things. It could be it could be wealth, it can be anything but right. like material And it is it is the male the male principle. The male the masculine principle. The moon is the feminine principle and the moon's number is 1080. Okay. 1080. Hmm. Where have I seen that number? Oh, yeah. On your flat screen TVs, uh, the 1080 pixels is the vertical resolution of nearly all HD TVs. 1080p wow is full HD. What is that? That's digital. What did everything change to? Digital. Yeah. What what could um what what has been said about concerning the simulation theory is that this could be a simulation that is so real with such a high resolution of what pixels Mm -hmm. that we could not that we would mistake it for being real but it even goes beyond that because that would mean that that would mean that we we ourselves are avatars and so but this is this is the this is the kicker about super determinism uh, quantum entanglement i don't believe this is where i disagree with bell's theorem this is where i disagree with super determinism is i don't believe that there is a total lack of free will a total lack of choice there is just a very, very small, like, like I was talking to, uh, you know, talking to Sue, Sue Ellen about this, about ninety nine point ninety nine percent is determined. I mean, it's it's done. There's nothing you can do to change it. But there's that point oh one percent that is left, and for for me my theory is that 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 would have to exist that would have to be or or there would be no there would be no real program it would it would crash it would it would implode on itself or something like that there would have to be some opposing force and my theory is is that that force is going to be as small as possible so, and when I think, I think they, go ahead. And when I was thinking about this, I thought about what Jesus said when he said, "The way to destruction, the way to hell, is a broad road, a wide road, and everybody's on it." 
He says, but the way to eternal life and to heaven, he says, is the narrow road, and very few will find it. Very few. What, the eye, the eye of the needle? No, no, no. He said, uh, well, well, the... Well, there's another one. It's harder, it's harder to get through the eye of the needle than it is for a for, camel, for, for a rich for, man to get through. Right. And, um, to get through the, um, to the needle. To get to heaven, yeah. To get to yeah. Talking about somebody that loves money. It, right. But this, this he said, said, the road is broad, the road is wide, and it's, and everybody's on it. He says, you know, most are on it, and they're going to their own destruction. He says, but the way to salvation... The way to, uh, and I'm not talking religiously, I'm not ta- I'm talking spiritually, the way to what, escape the program, the prison, you know, if you want to call it that, though that road is narrow and very few will find it. And he said that. Very few will find it. So, as far as this goes, they say that that it's all set a hundred percent. I believe if that was the case, it would be, for lack of a better term, it would be boring because there would there would be absolutely no be no chance. It would just uh, you would have complete robots, and you know there would be be no. I don't even know how to describe it. There would be no surprises. There would be. I, I think they like program maybe our family, our you know, our socioeconomic, um, you know, means of uh, of wealth of all our friends, our social things. They they pick things like that, but you know, maybe alternate endings. <laughs> you know, depending on the choices we make. Right. And then we have to. And repeat the level again if we don't make it. That's what reincarnation is, really repeating the level. But how many chances do you get before you have to start the whole thing over again? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what some people have talked about, the cycles, you know. I mean, if you want to get out of the wheel. (laughs) Well, um, yes, yes, the um, karmic wheel or... Um, mm-hmm. the but, karmic way. That's why we gotta pay the piper. Right, right. We have to, we have to pay the ferryman <laughs> to pass through the underworld. There you go. I mean, yes, and that's that is all. Um, that's all metaphor. I mean, it's it's. Um, but you know, people take it as being literal. But, and it's just not so. You know, but I thought, and I think, you know, we could be learning something too. What? We can um, also be in a dream. We, well, we could be. And uh, what? what is a dream or what could a dream be? It could be a hologram. It could be a, it could be. 99 empty space and then the 0.1 is thought. Which you can't see, but its its weight and volume still exist. I think that 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 dreams are are a projection of our genetic memory by our consciousness, playing back memories, even memories from the future. Because there again, everything's happening oh, at really? once. Oh, okay. Right. Everything mm-hmm. is happening at once, mm-hmm. and I have experienced that before. I have experienced. Um, and, and it wasn't a dream. It was more like a vision, and it scared the hell out of me. I mean, it literally scared me. And there's not much that scares me, but this scared the hell out of me. I mean, I was really freaking out. I thought I was losing my mind because I was laying in bed, and I might have dozed off or whatever, but I, I just sh- shot up, you know, out of bed. And there was this... I saw this, saw two men 
that were dressed in white um, that I thought were doctors, and then there was a nurse, and the main doctor was you know saying you have no one we can call he was holding my cell phone he says you have no one to help you you have no one to help you you have no one to help you and i just came up and i still heard that voice i still heard his voice and it's like oh my god am i losing my mind you know even more than it's already gone and i'm like what is going on and i mean i was scared because this voice was it sounded audible but it was in in my head you know and this was this was you know before there was any talk of you know voice to skull tech technology and um so so i don't know but well right let's see Elaine, you say scares me when dreams are so real lifelike this one turned out to be very real I was um, on uh, in on in North Arlington, very very far away from my home where I lived in uh, Parker County, and um, my vehicle broke down, and um, in the middle of nowhere, so I had to walk, and it was summer and it was like ninety eight degrees at night i mean we're talking texas and it was just uh, just um really really bad um and so um so it was um really taxing on me uh let's see sue ellen uh if if you would uh you can hang hang up and call back because i think we're we're, we're picking up a lot of something i'm not sure what it is so so i'm going to okay. uh yeah yeah just uh oh, hey. okay and call me back yes all right but um okay let me call her right back i'm not sure what that is but she's been having problems with her phone since we started talking about this even before we you know started the show so uh, very very strange oh uh, wrong phone <laughs> um let me see okay hold on um but i i uh, walked i walked like a like i don't know um i walked like 20 miles 15 20 miles or whatever hello hello yeah okay okay you're back okay so so i walked like i don't know i said 15 20 miles it might have just been 10 it was so hot and my cell phone wouldn't work imagine that and mm -hmm. not, not not only that but my debit card wouldn't work and I just had one at the time. I mean, I just had one card, and it wouldn't work. I tried to call them. Uh, they were closed, you know. And, I mean, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And yeah. and um, I made it to this restaurant, and I sat down, and I was just, you know, I was just, you know, sitting there. I wasn't, I, I didn't, I mean, I wasn't sitting there crying or anything. I was just sitting there and minding my own business, and this guy walked in, and he was Hispanic, he was big, and he was covered in tattoos, and um, just just looked, you know, like he was a, like he knew how to handle himself, like really, you know, good. And he kept looking at me, and I'm like, oh, man, this is not what I need right now. And... um so I'm thinking, oh man. So he gets up from, I guess his two girlfriends. I had no idea, but uh, he gets up and he starts making his way over to me, and I'm like, oh god, here we go. And he comes over and he says, huh. he says, hey brother, he says, here's five dollars. He says, I don't know what you're going through. He says, but I feel you. 
And I'm like, oh, my God. I said, man, I said, I can't take this from you. And he says, no, he said, I want you to. And he wow. said, and um, I said, well, you know, thank you. And um, so got me something to eat and everything because nothing was working. I mean, it was, it was like it was like I was in hell. I mean, it, ah, it was so horrible. It's, so you know, And nobody helps you. You no, know what I mean? You feel like nobody would. really, really good and look at you with suspicion. And what, what? What what he said was is he said he said I would take you home because it was like it's like thirty miles away. He said I would drive you home. He says but he says I've got like six DWIs. I'm thinking good grief, you know. And but hey, you know I mean he was he was nice to me. I mean great to me. But yeah, yeah I mean nobody would you know help help me. You know it was like like I was, was Charles Manson or something. You know and so. So I started walking again. Well, I remember walking and just being so exhausted that my legs felt like jelly. And next thing you know, I remember falling over a like a barricade, like a sawhorse. And that's the last thing I remember. And I woke up in the back of an ambulance. But I didn't know it was an ambulance. I woke up and there were the two doctors what i thought were doctors a week before and the nurse it was a woman you know paramedic dressed in white and the two male paramedics that i thought were doctors in uh, a week before the main one had my phone and he said we've called everybody and he says you don't have anybody to help you you have no one to help you We've we've called everyone. You have no one to help you. And I just leaned back and smiled. And he says, what's funny? And I said, um, I said, I just have this feeling I've been here before. And he says, what do you mean? I said, oh, I said, I just deja vu. I, w- I wasn't going to say what really happened and wind up, you know, in the psych ward. So um, he said, uh, he said, well, uh, we we um, took your you know blood sugar or whatever, and he says your blood sugar level was at forty, or you know is is, is it forty? He says how are you even conscious? He says how 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 are you you know talking to us? And I said, look, I just do it. I don't explain it. <laughs> and um, they um, they they were just your blood pressure and your heart rate too and you just look at it like a champ listen mom, my mom says that she should have named me Timex I take a licking and keep on ticking <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyway uh, which is not saying much it would, be not, would, would be a lot better not either. to take the licking you know so but, um, yeah. but no. yeah yeah um, I just pretend Elaine says it's her when her dreams are so real and lifelike. Right, right. And I, and I like, I like try to get back to that because it feels like even more real. You know, I mean, I can fly and I it feels more real and alive than I feel right now. Well, 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 well it's like the the uh, you know dream that I had. You know, where where I hit the young monk because I thought it was like a lucid dream. I didn't think he was real. And I guess he was because because it was like, you know, I got in trouble for it. And it's like, it didn't quite work out the way, you know, it was like a fluke. I thought, wow, you know, I thought, oh, I'll crack him and, you know, and he'll disappear. I cracked him and he landed on the floor and I'm like, oh my God, (laughs) what is this? And then these two big goons come up and grab my arms and take me into this big room. And I'm this big, like, you know, semicircular stone room or whatever where this judge, I guess it was a judge with a gavel. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I might be here a while, you know. And, um, yeah, Mona says only if it's a good dream. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, Mona, it, it was sad. Matter of fact, they felt so sorry for me that, they they went to this convenience store 
turkey sandwich, all this juice and everything. They brought it back and they said, "Eat this, drink this." They said, "You know," I said, "My God, you know, you're 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 gonna have a heart attack or something." And so, anyway, uh, yeah, that that was a rough night, very rough night. But um, but it was exactly exactly what I had seen a week before and what I had heard down to everything. I mean, the the man I thought was a doctor was just a paramedic holding my phone. We've called everybody, and nobody will answer. You have no one to help you. And I'm thinking, okay, well, that's where that came from. But that was a week before that happened, or was it? Everything's happening at once, mm-hmm. right? So I think that sometimes that there's certain I don't know certain prerequisites that mix, mix up of where you are we 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 mix or we step through time through the illusion and we we must meet some certain prerequisites or something and we actually we actually go through the veil so to speak or at least peek in um it's it's like um, it's like we're in this dimension, but at times we slip into or partly into another to where we pick up certain things, and I believe that that's where deja vu comes from. Is we get bits and pieces, or just a few seconds, and then it's like the adjustment bureau movie. Um, some alarm goes off and they're like, whoa, pull him back in. You know, he doesn't need to see that. So I think that that's why that deja vu just lasts a few seconds because as soon as you're in it, you're out of it. You know, I've never heard somebody right. say, oh, I had deja vu for, you know, like three hours, you know. <laughs> no, you didn't have deja vu, yeah. bub. You went to a totally another dimension if you, you know, three hours. But, um, so, the, um, the, the really amazing thing about, um, about the numbers, as far as, you know, the simulation theory, is that, um, the numbers, um, for for the sun and the moon, um, of course they um, when you add them together, it it um, equals um, seventeen forty six. Okay, that's a that's an important number, very important, powerful number. Um, seventeen forty six. I believe, gosh, if I can find this, um, let's see, 1746 was, um, was when, 40 years before, when, uh, it was, it was 30 years before the Constitution was signed, and it, there's, there's something about the, I don't know if it's the 30 year war, forgive me, something about the 30 year war, whatever, but, um, uh, something about that year, 1746, and I think I think I've got it now. Um, let's see. Okay, um, I'm not sure, but um, we we have 46 chromosomes, right? And then, mm-hmm. um, and then seventeen. I'm not sure what you know. Seventeen would represent, but um, uh, something. I didn't prepare for this as far as you know going so so, so deep. But but I saw the rosary 108 beads. You know, 108 beads. The mala 108 beads, and then put that with with the moon, Luna. Um, at 1,080 pixels, the vertical resolution of nearly all 
full HD TVs, which is digital. And um, yeah, it's 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 very. There's there's ninety two natural elements. There's there's ninety two. Ninety two natural. It, right. Nine, right. I don't know if that's a number, so I'm just bringing it up. And then if you divide that number, uh. Well, um, what what I find very interesting is that um, you is that you know computers started with with what eight bits plus eight bits sixteen plus sixteen thirty two plus thirty two yeah, sixty four. Remember the Commodore mm-hmm. sixty four. Oh. And then, yeah, heard of it. and then you take take that, um, and it's one twenty eight. All of those numbers from from eight. Um, There's sixteen unnatural elements. Sixteen un unnatural. Oh, okay, Elaine, uh-huh. you say it's, say it's an angel number. Okay. Um. So, 128 plus 128 is 256, and then it keeps on going um, to 512, and um, 512 is 1024, which which is the, uh, you know, pixels on your, or the, you know, resolution on some larger monitors, you know, computer monitors. So, um, that's just, um, plus 64, 32, these, you know, numbers have, have, have a lot of meaning. I mean, they, they really do. Um, you, and I think that Everything here is um, run by numbers. Right. And music, everything. Right, music, big time. And um, mm-hmm. and uh, when when we talk about, you know, 666, um, that is, in Hebrew, that is www, you know, 6... Mm-hmm. equals W, W equals 6 in Hebrew, or V equals 6, 6 equals V, um, Hebrew letters. But this is um, this is what is really amazing, is that the Kabbalist, those who really, really studied it and, you know, everything, they, their, their prized book, their most dangerous book, and it was said that, that there were, you know, men or, you know, that there were rabbis that read it and, you know, studied it and literally went insane. They lost their mind. Uh, they just couldn't handle it. And um, I'm wondering if this, this you know, theory or fact is what they found is that there was really, there was really nothing... Uh, as, such as um, tr- true choice with with without having the odds stacked against you making a true choice or making your own choice and um, I don't mean that but isn't there books or books like on how to hack the system and be able to actually make things and create things that you want through that, you know, magic or whatever. Well, a particular well yes, yes, there are, but that, that's, that's getting into, um, it's getting into really, really dangerous territory because what, what the book of for, formation is, is it is, uh, you know, it says that it's using the Hebrew letters. It's how to use the Hebrew letters to create, to to literally create matter in this world. 
aka the golem, the clay, you know, man figure and or you know male figure that they would write the Hebrew letters on the forehead and do certain incantations, and it would become a living um, man or monster or whatever. And this was said to have taken place in Prague in, I believe, the 1500s, that there were a group of, you know, Kabbalists that did this and that that this, um, this, this created um, Avatar, if you want to call it that, uh, terrorized Prague for, I don't know how long. Frankenstein. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. But what what that book is literally saying what it's literally describing it has nothing to do with the hebrew letters it has everything to do with subatomic particles and how to manipulate how to use them to manipulate reality as we know it and that's why that's how that's why that the that the kabbalist they they'll take their prayer shawls their seat seats and they will close those, and you will see them rocking back and forth, back and forth, and for hours, hours, hours. What are they doing? They're praying. But how are they praying? They are imagining. Listen, this, this knowledge does, does not come from books. It does not. Yes, some of it was passed down, but what I'm talking about is it was... It comes from your imagination. You you get a visual, you get a mental image in in your mind in using your imagination, and and little by little, day by day, the more you you know focus and pray on it or meditate or you know whatever they did do. Um, with with the rocking actually going into a altered state, but nevertheless, you are bringing about a manipulation of reality itself. Now, I find that very, very you know fascinating because they even admit that that it that it is formed and comes from their imagination. And Einstein is quoted as saying, imagination is more important than knowledge. It's like I said, where does knowledge come from? It comes from he, he's imagination. Telling you, he's telling you that the observer is more important than the creation or vice versa. Well, the... the Say it again. Um, he says, he said, in imagination is more important than knowledge. And what he's saying is, is just what the Kabbalists say. They say the knowledge comes from the imagination. It comes from within. That is the way you're learning to be a creator. That's you're right. An architect. That, that's that's right, and that's why that they say that. That um, no rabbi or he who wants to study the Kabbalah must be a rabbi in good standing, good mental health, <laughs> very good mental health, and he must be married and have children. He must be secured, he must be rooted, and even then, no one under 40 is allowed to study the real Kabbalah. Now, this this you know stuff you see Madonna and all these movie stars with the red you know with the red string around the wrist yeah that's 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 a that's a sign of you know Kabbalah but theirs is like uh, I don't know Kabbalah daycare or something you know it's like they're playing to where where these these real dedicated and when I say dedicated I'm talking about uh, it, it was said that some went into went and lived in caves sometimes for like seven years 
just just studying day and night over the Kabbalah. And, you know, yeah, that's pretty dedicated, you know, to stay in a cave and, and you know, have people come and leave you food or, you know, you are, it's just you and God or you and your mind and you are meditating on those letters, those symbols, and um, you are creating. You become a creator. And um, what is that? Well, in a way, you you become a god. You become a little god. In my opinion, I mean, well, I'm saying little you like, Aren't you like your creator? What now? Well, I guess not. You know, we say we're endowed, you know, in the image. We're, it says we're made in the image. Well, no, but not everything is made in the image, right? Right, and and uh, that that was um, said. You know, let us make man in our image. Well, that's um, what what is God? God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. So I can't. I can't keep from, uh, you know, thinking, and this is just my theory, that that's talking about the spiritual image of God, not the physical, because I I don't think that um, that they were actual physical, you know, flesh and bones until they sinned, until they fell, because says God's in the garden and he says where are you Adam and he says I, I, I was hiding and why are you hiding well because I'm naked who told you you were naked well you know and then they go into that and then it says and God made skins for them and I believe that those skins weren't weren't like lamb skin or anything like people say I believe that it's the skin it's the body you're in that's your prison mm-hmm. and um and and it says over and over in the bible when when you shed this earthly tabernacle or this earthly you know basically this earthly prison which which it's kind of a double whammy because it's your body and I'm and I'm not promoting anybody. I mean, I'm not promoting suicide by any means. But I'm just saying um, that that the body is is a type of prison. I mean, really. And then you've got the You're world. And they, even they name themselves, and, and they call light prism. You know, very close to uh, that prism. Prism. Right. Prism right. Right. In the cell. Yeah. And, and, and there's some that say don't go through the light when you die. They talk about that false, bright, bright light that, um, you know, overtakes you. And, and they say that that's a false light. Well, And that, that that lowers people back into the reincarnational cycle. Well, well they, uh, you know, say that, that um, I don't know, they say that... Um, that there's um I I don't know about that 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 might be I'm glad I've never experienced that um and, and uh-huh. hope hope I never do but it's like it's like I I don't really think that uh I can't I can't really see someone being uh walking like 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 they're walking down down the hall like they did in high school trying to find the right classroom i mean i just i just can't comprehend that it's it's like when 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 you die and you and you leave maybe this maybe it's because you get choice what now maybe maybe there's a choice maybe you have to like make a screw with you and say you have three doors you gotta pick (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I like the gong show, huh? Mm-hmm. Huh. Trapped again. Ah! 
and then back in Groundhog Day again, and no. then it doesn't matter what you do because you wake up. No, <laughs> that that's not going to happen because um, I oof, there'd be a lawsuit for sure. I'm <laughs> be like, what? Have to do it over again? Are you kidding me? Well, I want to finish the level. I look at it more like we're in a video game. Okay, well, right now, we're just learning, we're just learning the rules, and there's certain rules of this that we need to learn, you know, and that means learning about science and all that kind of stuff too, you know. So, I mean, you have to have uh, a broad sense of knowledge and spend time with it because all the elite and everybody, you know, they just use all of our lack of knowledge against us. You know, and manipulate us. And um, I don't know. I don't want to think and believe that we have no choice. That I believe that. Well, I don't either. Maybe we all, well, we all pick this for a reason. That we have a particular lesson that we have to learn, and something that we need to face. And we we are doing it in a video game. Well, and we're doing me. it in our dreams. Trust me, this 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 would not be my choice at all. I mean, not at all. Right. And, um, but I'm saying eight hours, I believe that during our sleep, we are supposed to spend our entire sleep being able to travel, um, imagine, have dreams, and wake up and remember them, explore, go to different levels, like you ended up on the monk level that one time. That should be um, a regular thing. Well, well um, who decides... Uh, and but they take the resonance off. You were saying that they took the frequencies and the hertz. They changed everything. So that so that stopped that. You know what I mean? Like even the musical scales were changed. I don't understand it all. I'm very... What now? The musical... Yeah, well, they changed the... Um, ugh, the... Um, I the said hurt? that they changed the the. No, no. Well, you were talking about how they did have, have changed frequencies, you know, to control people. Oh, okay, yeah. But yeah. Um, the actual talk that, like, um, even we don't play the musical um, in the same. I don't know what it's called, notes or scales, as we're supposed to. I know nothing, it's, nothing talk. about that. So. Oh, okay. They've been talking about this for a while. Okay. Um, yeah, and they say that they I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Well, they changed it because just like, you know, um, there's a Freeman, is it called the Freeman Resonance or whatever, you know, the Earth. Oh, the Schumann Resonance. Schumann Resonance, yes, and the Earth resonates at a certain frequency, but now you have harp and all these things, just right. like they've made 16 unnatural elements. They're trying to be creators, you know what I mean? They're making things, they just don't have enough money to complete what they're, it's like they're putting all the pieces together. 7.83 to hertz. Yeah, okay. Um, but in June 2014, there was a change. So. And to what? There was a change, um, let me see, um... Yeah, the Schumann Resonance. Um, okay. It says, the, it says the Schumann Resonance has been a natural and constant frequency of planet Earth pulsating exactly at 7.83 hertz for thousands of years. For the ancient Indian Rishis, I believe, um, this, um, This um, number had a special meaning and was considered the sacred and cosmic sound in the Hindu religion. For the Western world, the Schumann resonance represents the frequency of the Earth's electromagnetic field. It is always concentrated at it has always concentrated at 7.83 hertz, with few variations since 1952. But in June 2014, there was a change. This is when the Russian space observatory system showed a sudden increase in activity with a varied elongation from 8.5 hertz to 16.5 hertz. Um, the researchers were amazed at these values, something they 
that had never been recorded that way. More and more recently, other peaks have been detected, increasing the planet's frequency to more than 30 hertz. Um, it is concluded that these changes clearly show that the planet is changing. Some scholars believe that humans, when acting on a collective conscious le- consciousness level, can affect the structure of the magnetic field. There you have the definition of the um, morphic resonance. So, this speculation is based on the fact that Schumann's frequency is in tune with the human brain, with the human brain states alpha and theta. These increasing resonances correspond, of course, to the activity of the human brain waves, which means that the Earth would be adjusting its frequency of vibration. This may be an explanation for the strange feeling we have that time is passing more quickly these days. The reason is apparently linked to the excess speed of the Schumann resonance, which makes us feel a 24-hour period as if it were approximately 16 hours. That makes a lot of sense. And time is not our only notion of acceleration. Today, access to information and increased world awareness also influence our sense of time. So... That's that's something to to really think about. Um, so, and what if these hertz or frequencies can program, or even like radio stations, you know, and then on certain ways that we can't hear, but we can be programmed, and maybe like we and we've seen, it's the brain that makes. The executive decisions, you know. So <clears throat> maybe somebody uh, they can mess with our brain, therefore mess with the frequency, and um, you know, then we can't be aware and awake to who we really are. Right. Um, well, maybe so. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not really we're sure. All, about we're that. off now. Everything's just off. No one feels like that great or that good or, or right. Well, um, so so so, uh, what are your um, uh, your thoughts on this? I mean, I know it's not a pleasant thing thing to think about, but it's um, it's certainly. Um, I don't know. It's you know convincing, or it. It's um, very compelling, to say the so, least. So, in this theory that everything is programmed, so what does that mean for us? That this is just going to be what we experience in perpetuity over and over again? Or how does that work? No, I... Well... I'm not sure. I mean, it could be. It could be anything. I mean, anything's possible. But, but I, I, I feel like it's my, it's my theory that, that, um, that you know, it's that this is the last cycle, and and uh, whenever this is, this is said and done. This is you know when it's over, uh, then. We enter into eternity, or um, whatever you want to call it, heaven, um, nirvana, or you know. Um, mm-hmm. So. Nirvana. Valhalla. Uh, there's there's all different kinds of of um, words for it. I mean, it's um, but basically the same concept yes it's mm-hmm. scary and disturbing and goes against everything we've been taught spiritually r- religious and sc- scholastic ah. scholastically scholastically scholastic ah forget it scholastically yeah tell that to my tongue <laughs> hey I my bu- tongue does the same thing I butchered it and it needs um, <laughs> But yes, that's that's exactly right. And uh, the last thing that that you know that you're going to see a lot of these 
um, spiritual giants, these men of faith, of word faith, like Kenneth Copeland and Joel Osteen and all these people, you know, get up and say, is say, hey, you know what? <laughs> it's already set. You're already going to do what you're going to do, and you're already going to, you know, you're going to be held accountable for what you do, and that's part of the lesson. So there's really no need to um, send that thousand dollars in for for your for your healing, or there's really no need to. Uh, and that's crazy to begin with, you know. It's like they they and they've already set up panels. Um, according to the Bible, they've already set up the panels of. The saints are the ones that are supposed to be the ones that, um, you know, condemn them or yeah. sentence them. Well, well, Paul says, says, uh, don't you know that we will judge the angels? Talking about the fallen angels. He says, don't you know we will judge them? We will, is what he says. The believers will. And um, I... But yeah, yeah, that's 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 where that verse comes from. Is where you know. What are you talking about? Are you talking about angels. We're talking about fallen I angels they... or demons, oh, whatever okay. you want to call them. But um, but yeah, and that's that's just it. Is is could could this be the revelation? Could it literally be? the revelation because I listen to like past shows and I have said that um, that I don't really think that I think that that what the what would be worse than much more you know catastrophic much more um, distressing than something like a meteor or, uh, you know, slamming into the earth would be for information, for certain knowledge to become known that goes against, and you've said it clearly, that goes against everything that the world has been taught spiritually and religiously and scholastically. Mm -hmm. That would be, people would be, you know, if that's the truth, it's like, you know, a lot of people say, um, or or it's been said, you will know the truth, but first it's going to piss you off. <laughs> and that would piss and a lot of people off. And you will be disturbed. <laughs> right, yeah, absolutely. And that is, that is really going to, if, if that's, that's the case, I mean, you can't really prove it, you know. I mean, you you just can't. I mean, that's there's no way um, until it's all over. I mean, and that's what really sucks about it. But it's kind of like a black hole. You can't see it, but you can see the effects it has on things around it, and that's kind of like right. this, like radiation, right. And that's kind of like this is, you know, you can you you can kind of put the pieces together and you say, wow, you know, I mean, Jesus did talk about it is written, it is written, you know, and and God said, and they they put so much emphasis on scripture and how you don't deviate from scripture and the power of the word. Uh, Jesus and, is called the and word. You know, every hair on your head. You know, every hair on your head, which you brought up a point before we sh we you know started the show, you said could could we all have God in our head, in our brains, in our skull? Well, you have in your brain a place that is the sphenoid bone, where the pituitary gland sits. And uh, the pineal gland is not far from it. And that is, in Latin, it's called uh, the tela, um, the sella, 
Yes, Sela Tersica, which means mercy seat. Where does God sit in the temple? In the mercy seat. Where is the sphenoid bone in your head? Between your two Mm -hmm. temples. And um, where did Jesus, where was Jesus crucified? At the place of the skull. Golgotha. Golgotha. And people say, well, it's a hill and, you know, that looks like a skull. Well, maybe so. But it could be the skull in your head. He lived 33 years. You've got 33 vertebrae in your spinal column. And um, you have 12 cranial nerves at the base and of your skull. And Bruce Lee lived 33 years. You, you have 12 cranial nerves at the base of your skull that are the 12 could be the 12 disciples and then hmm. then further up in your brain you have 12 nerves on one side and 12 on the other side which would be the 24 elders spoken of in, of in the book of revelation around what around the throne of god what's the throne of god the ark of the covenant which is the sphenoid bone it says on it says that the cherubim the angels would would um that that god would would sit on the mercy seat that the spirit of god would would reside between their wings on in the mercy on the mercy seat which was on the lid of the ark of the covenant what is in the chariot the, of fire what is in the ark of the covenant well it would be the manna that they were fed in the desert. It would be the Ten Commandments, the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. And it would be Aaron's rod that budded. That um, um, So, and that is very interesting too because um rod of Aaron what Moses used what now is a rod of Aaron what Moses used is it Moses's rod that turned into could turn into a snake uh that I believe it was Aaron's rod that yes yes it was Aaron's rod, rod rod that turned into a snake um and swallowed the, well, Moses the, used. the two snakes of Pharaoh yes yeah, so um, so how long but, that? what now go ahead it, it was <clears throat> your uh, go ahead it's what you're saying um, the the ark of the covenant okay get this is um is possibly this is just you know and where does the information come from that you're saying those three things are in there the bible it says that that's what's in yes uh-huh. the ark of the covenant yes it says that then what made their what made their faith what made them die when the people peeked inside of it well, see, that's, I believe that's a metaphor, too, is you have, you have two gold angels, right? Two gold cherubim, um, and their wings are almost touching or uh, touching, and the ark itself was made out of wood, so what you have, you have a an electrical conductor. I mean, gold is is very much so, um, and electrical. It's the most powerful electrical conductor. So um, then you um, have the um, so. They were killed, killed by 
seemingly in electrical shock or by radiation or you know it could be well i mean i don't think it'd be nuclear because they they weren't like incinerated but this is this is what what i think is that that yes there may be an actual arc but it is built as a prototype of the of our DNA Exodus 25 22 says and there I will meet with you I will commune with you from above the mercy seat between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony and I believe that that the one angel on top of the ark is actually the DNA strand one DNA strand the other is the second DNA strand and um, they sure. the one cherubim the one angel supposedly has uh, some you know sequence like uh, TGCA and the second would have just the opposite ACGT and when you interwind those, what 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 happens? You have life, power. You have, um, and who gives life? God gives life. So between their wings, between these the two strands, as they intertwine, what do you have? You have life. And. Um, it says in Colossians three eleven, it says Christ is in all, is all, and in all. Um, so you have the. See, when I saw when I saw the DNA strand, I thought it, of it as uh, the tree of life, or Jacob going up and down the ladder. You Jacob, know, that was just my thought in school. Jacob's ladder, where no, when I, where he saw the angels. Ascending and descending. Uh-huh. Well, get this: yep. the the electron, the proton, and the neutron could very well be the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And this is something that is amazing. Well, it's, all, all, it's, it's yeah. This is something that is amazing. Hydrogen is the first element, right? It's the first element, mm-hmm. and it is the foundation it is the basis that every other element is built upon correct hydrogen every other every single element is built up is its basis its foundation is hydrogen do you know what the um what the atomic i believe it's the atomic number is of hydrogen. It's one point zero zero eight, and there you have the ten eighty again. Oh, which one is six six six? One of them is. I have no idea. Oh. But, but, so, so it it says that. It says in the Bible, it says, the Lord our God is one. Okay, well, hydrogen. It says that hydrogen is the, is the most abundant chemical substance in the universe, constituting roughly 75% of all baryonic mass. Right. It has a top, oh, listen to this, it has an atomic weight of 1.008. Yeah, yeah. If you're 108. Yeah, I just now said that. I said... I said the one point zero zero eight, and oh, look, look at the I ten, ten eighty, and uh-huh. and then the one hundred eight. There's those numbers again. Oh yeah, ten eighty. Oh yeah, ten. Yes, you're so right. And so, so wow. it when when you really start start to dig, and you have to dig. I mean, it's it's not going to pop up and say. Here I am, you know, and I'm going to put the dots together for you. You have to do it. But when you do, you start to find out, wow, there's a pattern here. And if there's a pattern, then someone had to make that pattern. And there's definitely a pattern here. 
and really, I mean, if you want to get, you know, if you want to get technical with it, um, 18 is a very, very powerful number. Um, you, you, it's you, for a tarot. you take 180. What's that? Well, that's half of 360, right? I mean, there's, that's half a year. There's, you know, it's amazing. I mean, it really is. But um, you take 360, you take away the zero, the 36, you add every number to 36. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 up to 36, and it equals 666. So. Yep, and there, in the um, 666 relates to the carbon atom. And man, um, oh. there's six protons, six ex- uh, uh, electrons, and six neutrons. Absolutely. And that's part of and the every- magical God magical code carrier is the very code for all life. Absolutely. Carbon based. Carbon based. And um, it's it's really it's really amazing uh, when you get right down to it as far as the the star of david you you have the proton which is positive which you could say points up you have the um neutron or the um i'm sorry you have the electron which points up you have the proton which points down or vice versa but than the neutron, which is neutral, so that that could very well be the the or David or the intersecting triangles. Now the um, the um, it you know goes into the different um, things as uh, golden pot of mana, which would be the DNA and. RNA and everything like that. But anyway, we have gone on for almost two hours, so we're going to call it a night. And um, those of you that took part in the live chat, thank you for being here with us, and we've enjoyed it. And I um, hope you got something out of the show tonight. Uh, I know we covered a lot of information, but um, anyway, if if you would like to... Thank everybody. If you'd like to uh, contact us, you can reach us at um, the Texasist Podcast at gmail dot com, or, or go to our website at uh, www dot dash podcast dot com. And um, Sue Ellen, Thanks do you so want to add anything? And make sure to like and subscribe and share and download. Yes, we would appreciate that if you would. And tell your friends and family, and um, we would certainly appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for being here, Nazarene, and um, good night, everybody. Uh, Yeah, like the like button. Thank you, Elaine. We will call it a night, and we will see you next time. Good night, everybody.